Hi, and welcome to this edition of The Spirit of the Valley. Um, I'm very excited today to have an old friend slash colleague slash crazy person with me. I, he doesn't like me saying that, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, Jay Davis, I am so happy you're here. I thank Fine. you. This Jay has had a very evolving career since I've seen him in Hanover. He was a colleague at middle school, and he's now with the big guys at Dartmouth doing lots of things. Yeah, I, th let me just right. Let me hear your titles for sure. Jay, just so yep. I... Well, when I left the middle school right. where we got to work together right. years ago, um, I did teacher education work at Dartmouth, right. and so I was involved with that for 11 years. And during that time, was invited to direct this program, which is why I ended up leaving my work at the middle school. Yeah. Which desperately tried to keep my fingernails in the ceiling there. I loved it, but well, we over time, yeah. well, thanks. But over time, ended up um, moving to Dartmouth full time, yeah. and so did teacher ed for a while. Did this program, which we're going to talk about yeah. today, and now I've actually just switched to. I still do this program, yeah. but now I work. I direct a program at Dartmouth, which is called the First Year Student Enrichment Program, or FICEP. Oh. And that's for Dartmouth students who are the first in their family to attend college, so first generation students, wow. and to help them, mainly low income, mainly students yep. of color, to help them with their transition, to yep. sort of help with the thriving piece. So that piece is the college success part of it, and then this program is more the college access part, working that's with the high school awesome. students. So, yeah. You just forget that not everyone in town hasn't had a sibling that's preceded them in college, yeah, so they aren't sure. all savvy to the ways of, ways of college. Yeah, I mean, I think there's actually, there's almost 100 Dartmouth students per class that qualify as first generation in their family, so wow. that's about 10%. And Do they of, all get in the program? No, oh. we work with those who um, are first generation and also oh. whose test scores suggest that there may be more of a struggle coming in, yep. and so, and then we invite them to apply. So wow. it's an incredibly, it's a wonderful group to work with. And their really background fun. you take into consideration as well? The background in terms of particularly the kind of high school they went right. to and okay. schools where they may have straight A's, but it's a school that has just less um, rigorous standards than, yep. say, for example, a Hanover yeah. High School. Um, and so those schools um, tend to not send many kids to Ivy Leagues. And yeah. so working at Dartmouth, which has done a wonderful job in the last 10 years of recruiting students from under-resourced right. backgrounds, sort of traditionally underrepresented groups at an Ivy League college, mm. particularly socioeconomically is yep. where we hit it. Um, now it's begun to do a really nice job in these last couple of years of saying we want to meet the needs of these students yes. um, if we're going to bring them here. And I think Dartmouth's committed to that, which has been exciting for me as a Dartmouth alum exactly. to feel proud of that He um, bleeds green, folks. Yeah, exactly. Um, to feel commitment from the college to helping students from all sorts of backgrounds. It's really fun. Wow. Do they apply for this, or do you go after them and they, say, we, we suggest it? Both. We strongly encourage them. And then if they apply with any sense of effort, commitment, then they're going to get in because yeah. we want to bring so them in. So it is limited. Yeah. You yep. can't just take no, it. No, but I mean, we, no, go outside right. the description you just right, gave. Right, exactly. Okay. Yep. So what happens, I'm going to get back here in a minute, but yeah. I, this, now you threw something new at me that I'm curious about. Yeah. What does this involve? Are you mentoring them? Are you modifying the So we the do work a combination, yes and yes. We don't modify their work in any way, no. but what we do is we take a week before the, the orientation week, okay. what used to be called freshman week, right. before that week, we work with these students for another week ahead of that. Oh. And on everything from academic preparation to, to, you know, how do you find the right resources on campus to how do you connect with each other in ways that can be supportive wow. as we go into this pretty, you know, high pressure cooking yeah, environment. Yeah, overwhelming. And then they have an upper class mentor who may or may not be from a similar background, right. often is. Yeah. Um, and then we also do programming throughout the year just to help them, you know. So you're following options. carefully. They can come to yeah, you and exactly. say, help, here's an area where I'm That's right. not doing so yeah. well in. And here's ways to find good off campus programs. I mean, things that, for someone like me who was not first generation, it was more in the groundwater at home. Yeah. You know, it was just sort of an expectation I was going to college. Exactly. My parents had been. They knew what it was like to have a roommate. There are things that aren't Look at those little pieces when you no, say roommate. It's huge. They've right. never shared a room with anyone but a sibling, yeah, pass, exactly. possibly, or maybe probably. But that's a whole study in itself. I that's mean, right. if that doesn't work, your whole year can be... Exactly. Completely, and even just knowing how do I self-advocate, how yeah. do I find the resources I need to to help me deal with this situation with a roommate or whatever. And so Having we try to help to. fill in some of those gaps for them. Those are almost as important to some people as the academics. Because yeah, completely. If you're, if you're not happy with your living situation, you're not happy. That's exactly right. Um, and changing isn't always an option, but as long as there's someone there that can mediate a little bit and figure out mm -hmm. what's best for you in terms of what's making this so unhappy. E exactly. Wow, that's a big deal. That's what and so it's sort of the other end of what this program is yeah. about, which is the more the how do you get students into college. Exactly. Like so you are in a program that I called SAD to myself just because it made it easier yeah. to, to leave it at home. Yep. Um, summer enrichment at Dartmouth. Yep. Now, 
Da -da. Which is a bit of a misnomer now. Well, it isn't just no, summer, no, right? It, right. The, oh. it started the summer, yeah. and now it's become a more of a year-round support program. And so, I guess you'd like the basics. I would of love the basics. Yeah. So um, the basic, the basic piece of it, we started it in 2001. It is a college access program okay. for students from um, high schools that are under-resourced and students themselves who qualify for free reduced lunch. So right. there's a common variable to all of them, which is that they they are from lower income background. Yep. They come in as freshmen in high school, so mm -hmm. they are 14, 15 years old, and they're identified by us and their school. Like, actually, I'm going to Schenectady um, in two days. I was in the South Bronx last week Ooh, you're where we're interviewing the students to try to find out who is the right blend for us. We're not a program that takes high-flying students of color, for example, right. when there are some great programs that do that, yep. that students that might want to go to NYU, and then this program has them, they go to Columbia, which is great. We're looking actually for a larger, in scientific term, the larger delta, right? That triangle ah. of change. We're looking yeah. for trying to find kids that aren't thinking about college as an option. And then maybe they go to Columbia, maybe they go to NYU, maybe they go to Plymouth State, maybe they go to a community college, yep. maybe they go to Dartmouth, and a few have. But the idea is that they, by the end of four years with us, yep. their conception of what's possible for them, both in terms of college, uh. but also in terms of just what they can do, whitewater rafting or tango dancing wow. or poetry writing, that they have a, a just a, a broader sense of what's possible. Well, look what that's done for their self-esteem and the overused that's, word, but it's still valid. Well, self-esteem is enormous. It really right. matters, and they suddenly sure. say, I, "I never heard of this, much less do it." And yeah. all of a sudden, I think I can do it. Exactly. And you equip them. That's the the theory, and yeah. about, so it's a sort of it's, it's a multiple part program. But I think the two major parts are when they're here. Yeah. So we bring them for four summers for two or three weeks each summer. Oh, they summer. do four. Okay. So they come back each summer. So yeah. this summer coming up, we'll have our, our Seed 4 group, which oh, is in I their fourth summer, which, you know, they, they, know, they know campus well by this point. It's, it's pretty fun, except, actually. And then we have Seed 1 students who are our very first ever, so they are the students I'm interviewing now to see oh, who wow. the right fit is. Excuse me, we bring them in um, two weeks later. They'll uh -huh. be coming here for two weeks this summer. And, so, and then they'll be here for four more summers. So there's the on-campus program. And then there is the, um, the, the internship program, which has become a huge piece of us. And that's why the summer in the summer in Richmond is really a bit of a misnomer yeah. because now a huge part of the program is, you know, you've got them here for three weeks. Well, there's 49 other weeks where exactly. they're not here. And they were selected because they tended to have more challenges at home or more challenges with school. Right. So by definition, then, if these are the students it's, you want to be working right. with, what are they doing in these other it 49 It has to be weeks? all year. Right. And so we send, Dartmouth's got a weird schedule where, not to get too much into the weeds, but basically all Dartmouth sophomores have to be on in the summer. Okay. So that's why that's right. those of you in the community have seen you See? know, students walking around exactly. campus. Is that there is, there's just, there's a thousand Dartmouth sophomores who have to be here. And it's a normal term. They're taking classes and right. doing all that. I see that as an eminently exploitable volunteer workforce, right? Oh, because you got all you these do. sophomores. You're a vulture at heart. Exactly. Right. We'll <laughs> boom, jump in there. You can help people. And so, but what happens is they get involved and, and they get excited about the program and they volunteer as a mentor, as an academic coach, or an activity coordinator. And then all Dartmouth sophomores or juniors, yeah. they have a term off right. because they were on for the summer. So they do some extra term where they don't, they're not taking classes. Right. They can, it's like your summer was in exactly. college, but it's not during the summer, right. which is critical for us because it means it's during the school year. Which therefore means we can eventually, and this is what we now have, have it so that, say you're a Bronx school, yeah. you've got a fall intern, a winter intern, and a spring intern. So for almost 30 weeks, you have a Dartmouth student, three different ones, who are in your school working with our students, yeah. working with the, co with the high school, trying, in essence, to impact the college awareness of the, of the place to try to make some difference in the likelihood of other students to go to college as well. I mean, that's what we're shooting for. So the con this continuity, in other words, when, it, when I was thinking of just summer, you think, oh, then those kids go home for a term, right. and what happens to these guys? And mm -hmm. you covered that. It's done. That's what we're trying to do. But, right. but I think it's genius, and, and the Dartmouth students have to be getting almost as much well, out you know, of it and that's, that's precisely it. It's got to be rewarding. That, and that's, you know, we didn't start it for that. We started it as, let's help these high school students. Um, and it was a seed. It was like, I mean, it's a bad analogy, but, but World War I wasn't called that. It was called the Great War. Exactly. It was just the war. They didn't know they were. Then when you had World War Two, <laughs> then it became it became World War One, and I think Seed was just Seed. Now it's Seed One, Seed Two, Seed Three, Seed Four, because about maybe five seconds, approximately after that first group left, the vans are leaving and they're heading off. You know, 
we realized that it was unethical to bring these 14 and 50 year olds for two weeks and then say, best cool. of luck, hope yeah, things go right. well, hope, you know, hope you, you, just... can, you can do it. Yeah. And so they now come for four summers, you know, all those pieces have been added into it. Wow. Um, and that allows us to meet their needs better. But the other thing that evolved enormously is what your question was, which is, you know, what about the Dartmouth yeah. students? And that, you know, ultimately we're probably affecting society more with that just yeah. because of the numbers, you know, the whole idea of paying it forward that you get all of these Dartmouth students. We have hundreds who get involved every summer, right? So say you have a thousand sophomores on in the summer. About 200 of them will be involved working as volunteers one-on-one -on -one with our students Fabulous. in some capacity this summer. Wow. And then you've got some other group that is members of fraternities, sororities, affinity houses that host our students for meals and we'll have a oh, barbecue so and a panel discussion. There's a way to, to get engaged. In yeah. and all that. Wow. And so, they, so they're getting involved as well. So really at Dartmouth graduation for, you know, for those in our community you know, who are sitting on the green looking at what's happening, <laughs> one in three of the students going across the stage are students that um, were in some way involved with SEAT. And so oh. what we've done is we've now surveyed that group um, and not, not the 300 but the, the smaller group which is let's say on average about 150 a year that have really been involved in a more sort of one-on-one -on -one way. Yep. We've surveyed that group. Um, oh, as alumni good. to see what, if any, impact the seed had. And mm -hmm. one really exciting thing we found was that 82% of those who worked, you know, intimately with seed, 82% said that seed has affected their career choices in some way. Now, some of them are the classic way you'd imagine a kid's working in an urban school yeah. somewhere. Or some of them is just there, they've, they've gone into the hedge fund, yep. but they're now thinking about how do they leverage that, those resources to be working with more and of social justice programs, et cetera. And philanthropically, yeah. and you make, it's, it reminds me of another group of Dartmouth students who I've met who are doing, one of them is really leading this group to get involved nationally, the fraternities, in doing philanthropic mm -hmm. things. And they've given tons of money to the local charities. Which and, is great. But now this guy has gone national with all the Greek system co-ed wow. to get them involved and he's got he's shocked and pleased at how many people are are, are giving are yeah. not thinking of just their own well and that's the thing I mean I think there's been lots of press about fraternities and sororities at Dartmouth oh. and at other places and right. I think what a program like seed or these other pieces you, yeah. you realize well I'm not disputing that but then there's this other piece as yeah. well right and it's not the all they and do and that there are Dartmouth right. students who are just exceptionally magnanimous of they spirit are. and wanting to be involved in ways. And, so, and also, they, they want their own lives to be transformed. They want to look at ways, if I get connected with these students and I go to this school and I work yeah. you know, in East Boston High School, how is my own understanding of myself going to be changed? How am I going to know more about yeah. what I want to do eventually? It's making them better right. while they're helping other That's kids get better because clearly these guys and others that they've touched are coming away with the idea of giving back, mm -hmm. giving forward, whatever their own careers end up being. They're going to have a piece of them inside them that says, give right. and share and I how can you ask for more than that from exactly a right. college student who people have the worst thoughts of and perception mm -hmm. of sometimes mm -hmm. and what they're, they're too selfish rather than less right. they're all doing something amazing and, and mm -hmm. these guys um, I know it, it's that way when you do anything that helps other people I do some volunteering at the hospital and I, I come away probably with as much reward as yeah, anyone exactly. I've helped that's right but is it is it hard to get the kids to do it? Is it no, the, you don't the Dartmouth to, students. Yeah. No. Well, it, you know, originally it was. Oh, it was, sure. Originally it was hard to find. You know, the sure. high school students felt like I was driving around Boston with a van with the door open. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> so you know, the fact that you're now an established program that has had results and that people right. have been involved with for the Dartmouth students specifically, it's just it's more of the sort of it's in the groundwater of the campus. You know, yeah. people are aware of seed. Upperclassmen now tell their sophomore friends, you know, you should do seed. It's a fun way to get involved. Oh, in something. I think that's wonderful. And so that it has the trickle down effect that that allows you to 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 not have to do a whole lot of work to just say, hey, right. it's time for seed applications. And but you can make a people difference. kind of understand what it is, right? I think I think that's what more campuses are, will eventually become, if not already are, only because I think kids are getting out of themselves more mm -hmm. now with that kind of thing and I think it's contagious. I think you see a roommate or I'd a like friend think so. who's passionate about what they're doing and it's all about giving back and this next one may say, you're having way too much fun, I gotta mm -hmm. find out about yeah, it. Exa and exactly. you don't want to drag them kicking and screaming into it. You want to 
Yeah. You want them to want to do it. And it's just a lot of fun, too. I mean, they're, they're in the summer, we're doing all these activities, we're doing all these oh. different things. It's like sort of summer camp on steroids. Well, I was going to say, that, it's a fun time of year to be doing it. Well, that's doing right. It. I mean, I think that you've seen T-shirts around that, you know, Camp Dartmouth, and yeah. they're referring to the summer term. Because, think, it's, you know, there's the river, it's sunny, there's it's something, all that There's kind a of different stuff. mindset about right. it. You, and I think of them up in those dorms with the heat waves. And, yeah, exactly. And they aren't going to be up there. Stuff. And I think that people tend to take easier classes their sophomore summer to have a bit more relaxed feel. Yeah. Which means we that they feel they have more time, and we can sort of tap into that and say, "Hey, you know, here's something." You can I know do you're not overloaded right now. That's right. Everybody wins. Right. But now, tell me about the kids um, that come up. Are they? Do they kind of stick together, or do they recognize that they're each in the same kind of you mean box, one socioeconomically, school versus school? or or the kids that are here? Um, you mean, right, the students schools, that are coming from the Bronx. Do they find, do they know that they're all yeah. kind of the same kind of background? Yes and no. I mean, well, yes, they do know it. Yes, they want to stay together in their group, right? Yeah. And, our, and our four schools um, this summer are going to be Schenectady High School, um, East Boston High School, oh. Raymond High School in New Hampshire. Oh, so wow. Raymond, many will know, is Good. right between Manchester and yeah. Exeter. But Excellent. sort of a world between each, and then um, and then the Bronx, the Bronx Center for Science and Math, and so two very urban schools. One that's it's not suburban, but it's more on the outskirts of a city, Certainly. and then one that's very small, 450 students, wow. rural, you know, with 99 percent white kids, and so it's a real, it's a very intentional mix geographically. Well, it's, I was going to say it should be. And ethnically, you get the mix just because of the schools we pick. You know, the, our school in the Bronx has maybe one white kid out of 600, and then our school in Raymond, New Hampshire, has maybe a couple students of color, and yeah. so. It's nothing intentional, we don't have a quota, but we it's pick schools that we're trying to work with where we know there's going to be an interesting mix. Well, that's, you can do it just by looking at the map. Yeah. I mean, you basically right. can with yeah. some knowledge of, right. of what it looks like. So to answer your question, when they come in then, these kids from these different schools, yes, they're connected to the Bronx, yes, they're connected to Raymond, they're feeling it, and, and to their students that they know at least somewhat. Yeah. But from day one, they have roommates from a different school every Good. single summer. There's always a different roommate they have. Good. There's just... We set up a structure where they really kind of have to mingle because that's just how it's how Well, it's they, done. they have to meet new people. That's what this partly is about. So and you talk about being pro-social. There right? you go. There's anti-social, and then there's not necessarily doing much, which is the way most of us are most right. of the time. Yeah. And then there's pro-social, which I don't know whether we invented the word or not, but it's that idea of I'm going to take the initiative to sit with somebody at a table that's done, and I'm going to take the initiative to try to understand what's going on in their life because I don't have much time. You know, Do you see that evolve from totally. going oh, totally sure. within their own little crew and then all of a sudden they're moving yeah, around? Absolutely. And, but you know, personalities vary, right? There's yeah. people like, say, someone who's an interviewer for a TV program who may <laughs> like talking to people, who may <laughs> not think? be such a hard thing to pull Judy out and say, hey, go talk to, I mean, Judy's going to be doing that already. And then there's somebody else that is much more inwardly directed, yeah. who it's a struggle to always be on. And so we try to honor that while also making it clear, look, you've only got this much time. So exactly. like cell phones, exactly. you know, they need to leave in their room for Good. basically 15 oh, hours. Oh, I love hearing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I think it's just the reality that, that they're going to get pulled, and maybe for very good reasons, but into this, their other world. Yeah. And we need, we've only got them for these couple, these precious weeks. It must seem very short. It does. Once they get And here. long when you're in the middle of it, because it's, you have such full days, and you're doing so many different things. And, but that and summer that. atmosphere, they win on that time, on yeah, the time they're doing this, because of what what you can do around here mm -hmm. on a nice summer day. Mm -hmm. You're not, obviously they're not all unserious things, but they no. have to mix. Right, but we have summer purely fun, right? I mean, summer mixed. just an uh, 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 ultimate Frisbee workshop on the green with the ultimate Frisbee team that does it, right? Oh. Or, you know, we're taking them canoeing and we go down to Tickham Island or something. Oh. That, you know, some of them just purely for fun. But, but then even within that, it's also skills it. and life they're, skills. They're and getting and skills that, you know, if you haven't been in a canoe, that's an education that's right. right there. We did just a studio art workshop last year with um, a studio art professor who's a wonderful man. Wow. Um, who, they, they, they had like, you know, just like one of these flowers. You just took a little seed Careful, of those are flower. real, Jay. Yeah, I not, didn't touch it. <laughs> um, a flower, and just had a little, but it had the seed, not the, the sort of interesting, right. beautiful part of the flower, but just the seed. And then the students were to draw it. And you oh. said these kids, you know, one of whom, you know, is six four guy from Fairmont, West Virginia, who's a football player. <laughs> and he's sitting there and he's, He's trying to get it oh, just right, and it's so it's a skill that he's not very good at, frankly. Better yeah. than I was, but not very skilled. <laughs> but for him to do that and to take that risk to try to Way do it, out of right? his and I think that, that connects. It's not disconnected from the academic realities in many yeah. of these kids' lives, is that it's, it's a lot easier to fail at something that you weren't trying at. Right? So if you're through biology, you got to say, I didn't try at that anyways. I wasn't, I wasn't doing my best stuff because the teacher stinks or whatever. Yep. But if you don't try, then no ego's at stake. If right. you do try 
and you potentially fail, then it's much more damaging to ego. And so part of, the, part of what we have to do is have these kids be more willing to take risks. Risks are just... And the risk of... Failing. Being able to try at something right. and maybe not doing it. So you take that AP history class and it's an incredible struggle and maybe you aren't going to pass. But that idea of getting outside of the comfort zone and taking yeah. risks that are going to ultimately, we think, pay off for the kids oh, is really that's, important. That's a huge lesson and, and everyone needs a little nudge mm -hmm. at certain ages, maybe all ages, um, to get in that out of the comfort zone and, and it, whether it's academics or canoeing or drawing i mean we're all we all could be should be doing that right anyone from any background yeah but agreed. for them to do it it just it, it isn't even setting them up to fail it's setting them up to be proud of themselves mm -hmm. really for just mm -hmm. trying that's that's a major gift that they take home i think so and, and hopefully will, it translates back to where and they they'll are. talk about that they'll talk about it at the end of the program you know the end of the three or four years will say what you know what what are you taking from this what's something yeah and one of the things they will say is the importance of stepping out of your comfort zone. I They'll love use it. that phraseology for it. Right? Good. And, and I was just actually just the last week I've been reading a book um, which I'd recommend to anybody who wants to sort of understand sort of how what do students need to know to succeed and I, what what it it's a wonderful book by oh, Paul, give us the name. by Paul, Paul Tuff. Thank and you. And it's um, I think it's I think it's how children succeed. Yeah. And it's it's looking at it, there's been a lot of research on it about the importance of grit and of determination, yeah. right? And of these we t character education, which is a pretty complicated concept and, and provocative, but it's usually in the sort of the area of morality and you know being generous to other people and being honest and all these things which are important. Oh. But then there's this other part of character, which is just the ability to get things done, right? Yeah. Or to get your work done. And mm. what are the parts of that? Well, resilience, you know, and grit and determination. Yeah. yeah. These things, which it turns out, you can actually have a dramatic impact on a student's brain and how they're thinking by, one, by having them understand that it makes a difference if you try to make it better. Yeah. That you can actually get better at it, right? And the fascinating thing was intelligence, which, not again, not to get too detailed on it, but, but it's very much, it, I would say, it's, it's not, there's no consensus on whether intelligence, how much of it is a fixed, innate part of you that cannot be changed, right? right? which is the theory behind the IQ, that right. it can somehow magically uh. capture what an intelligence is for someone, or how much of it is changeable. Yeah. And I would say that there's, not, there's certainly not a preponderance that says it is changeable. Right. There's not a preponderance that says it isn't, but certainly you can't say, well, you can just change your intelligence. But what's fascinating is that if kids think they can, they do better. Oh, and so the regardless of what the actual reality is, if they think, if the difference between students or adults that have a fixed mindset who believe it's just fixed, that's the way you are and you yep. can't change it, versus those who think if you work hard, you can actually get smarter, yeah. those students do better, right? And I think that's incredibly important for our program or for schools in general because that idea that, because one of the most dangerous things you can tell a student is, you know, you're really smart. Because the problem with it is that when a kid then tries something and fails, they go, well, it's just because I'm, I'm not smart not, enough I'm to do smart, it. Right. So why even try? It's all in attitude. Well, in reality, the attitude oh. is such a huge piece of it, right? Well, they learn so much about themselves. They learn about how they learn. Mm -hmm. And we've all been there with the minds of... Uh, the, the mind minds is mine, mind. exactly. Um, I think, I don't know, I'm getting the sense that these kids just must blossom to they some do. degree. I mean, and obviously there's a, there's a range, but... I would say generally they you really see changes, do, which is pretty I'm sure. wonderful. It's oh, some, unbelievable some part changes. of the spectrum. Right. Because you can't not do this, something like this without growing. And I think where you learn, what you realize is that academically, there's a big piece of things, which is the whole idea that um, they're going to get better at their yep. math, they're going to get better at getting their homework done, they're going to get better at whatever. It's but what it also is, is sort of life skill pieces. This is our very technological timekeeper here. I like it. Excellent. Yeah. So, so that put, means I have five hours left? Five or? hours left. Okay. And I can leave and come back because you've got so much to tell me. That's it's great. great. Um, no, but, but what I, this is important is yeah. that, that it's not just the academics, that it's also right. life skill pieces and sort of cultural competency pieces Absolutely. that they may not be getting at home. For an example, a, a Guyanan student from Boston, from South Boston, where we worked at the time, I saw him a few years later and I asked him, you know, what was, what, what's something you learned at seed? And he said, handshakes. Said, handshakes? What do you mean? Oh, and he says, boy. He says, you won't remember this, and I didn't, but the second day of seed, he was a seed one kid, he's 14 year old, um, and I just shook his hand for something he'd done. And then apparently, later in the night when he was alone, I followed up and said, you know, actually, um, Tushar, there's, th there's an issue in our sort of power structure of our society where if you shake my hand that way, and you'd classic kind of a limp handshake, yep. he didn't make eye contact. Right. I said, people are going to make assumptions, conclusions about your confidence. I'm not saying that's right, but that's just the reality. Yeah, it is. He said, and I forgot that conversation three seconds later. Wow. Gone. For him, 
it was something where he said every handshake since he's thought about wow. me and thought about seed. Oh, that's so warming. And that wow. is ultimately probably more important than him getting his homework done that night. Yes. Was just that idea that, that how he presented himself, something he didn't know. Because really, what difference does it make whether my hand is limp and or whatever? What does that show exactly. about me? Exactly. It shows But if people are going to jump to conclusions when they don't have a lot of time, yep. right? That, why do we match our socks? I mean, not, my daughter doesn't. She's nine. But that, you know, <laughs> we, we make decisions that, that are based on what are the keys to the kingdom, with yeah. the kingdom being success, happiness, money, whatever it is. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that these kids just don't know. And but we can help I with was that. brought up with that lesson. Yeah. My father said, if you don't shake a firm handshake, you're not say, your handshake should say, I'm glad to see, see you. Exactly I'm right. glad to be meeting you. And with that fish thing, what fish handshake, yeah. you get nothing. Right. So you are apt to come out on a negative and end that's of it. incredibly important but right. th that's such a minor life skill to those of us that do it exactly wow and then but we they just must assume, right? we assume which is wrong yeah obviously um, but they also must get a lot with study skills mm -hmm. because they sure. probably have been kind well, of time scattered management, right? and, it's the yeah. huge thing of it right oh. and just and helping them even just pay attention i mean we we could all use more of this so just just you know write down your day what do you do in a, yep. in a traditional day what time does it start what time does it right. and then looking at where are the places that i'm not as efficient as yeah. could be now i'm not saying i'm the, i'm very bad at this myself i'm not saying you should always be doing which is right. what i do you don't need to be doing that and actually we need more time to not be doing but be intentional about it and say, I'm going to build in some time where, where I'm not doing, where yeah. I'm being more Relax. mindful, where yeah. I'm taking that time. But then on these other times, actually, I need to get some stuff done. Yeah. And so there's not that always being in that gray area in between that yeah. is more intentional. I know this is what I'm now doing because this great. is important. If we can have them more able to do that, then they're going to be in pretty good shape. Well, I mean, think what that does to your life down the road. I right. mean, you've got to be there. You've yeah. got to be organized or you're not going to succeed. Let's face Without it. Without question. That's one of the biggest downfalls people have in jobs yeah. is just not being together. That's right. And that's all a boss needs to see and say, you know, I can find someone who is. And I guess one thing with our last two minutes I would want to really add is that a piece I didn't talk about was a reunion weekend. Oh. Just because it involves a community in some Excellent. neat ways is that our, we work with Hanover High School as our local school, right, yep. with, with Dartmouth. Yep. And Hanover High families oh. then host, we have a reunion weekend where they come back for five days oh. each winter or fall. Um, Penelope Pendergrass, who's a wonderful oh, Spanish teacher at the high oh, school. Yeah. She um, works with us. Bill Murphy, who of course, uh, Bill Bill Hammond, excuse Hammond. me, who is now, now, of course, the principal at Marion Cross. Yeah. He was the original liaison we oh, had to help us go, and he was that, wonderful. Yeah. And so the point was that they get to go and spend time in Hanover High School students' families. The high school students get involved. Oh. I just interviewed three high school students this morning from Hanover High who applied to be interns in my program. And so they'll come and be, work with us in the summer, and they'll help coordinate the reunions. In the, in so the, they're getting a little push from the administration at Hanover High. Yeah, or their parents or themselves these kids to are, say, I want to do this. Yeah, right. these and kids are usually giving And that's really exciting. Kids. So, oh, that reunion must be so much fun. And what we're kids. really doing by having these other host parents be involved in is that we're just we're increasing the number of adults sure. that our students can trust. And yep. that's a huge, huge important thing. But it also expands the number of students at Hanover that want to do it. Yeah, and word absolutely. of mouth right. says, hey, this it's, is cool. It's affecting the Hanover High, high students' perceptions as well. When these 30 kids come in and take classes and see things for that reunion yeah. weekend, they're getting a chance to ask different questions and see what it's like to live in a city or da 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 da. Wow. Yeah. What a marvelous thing you're doing. Well, thanks. I mean that. I, I feel I, very I, lucky to be doing when it. When I heard about your new life and now another one beyond, you've changed lives way too fast for me. <laughs> That's but, right. Um, I just thought this is all about giving. This is all about reaching out to the people that aren't as blessed sometimes. I think some of that, right. Educationally or yep. economically. And, and that's what it's about, yeah. is making it possible for them to succeed. And, and I, I know we need to finish. I think the way we thought I'd finish with is the power that comes from just bringing people from different walks of life and backgrounds and desires together. Yeah. The, the effect goes in all sorts of directions. So our concentric circles, right, the Venn diagram yeah. of seed has got all these different just high school ripples. students. That, but that gives you an opportunity to have a greater impact, which is just, it's just also just fun. You know, well, I think the fact that there's fun with it, obviously it should be, or no one's going to have fun right. doing it. But um, I, I just marvel at what you've accomplished in terms of getting it growing. You're probably growing the numbers of Dartmouth students, growing yeah. the number of Hanover students. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. all over the community We're now. We're trying to. Which is awesome. Well, thank oh, you. Oh, what a great thing. Folks, this is a smart guy. If you, <laughs> you know, he's going to be here another day with another six lives. And well, I'll, it's a delight to I'll talk. I'll get him. And but it's, it's fun to hear about it. I've read it, but it, it comes to life, and that's yeah. a lot more meaningful. Well, great. But I, 
if there's anything our community needs to do, is there anything and people can do to well, help? Well, I was going to say, if anybody is interested, no, we always are, are anxious to, to find ways to involve people. Um, and so, you know, people can just email me at j j a y dot davis at dartmouth dot edu, and and we'll I would be happy. We'll put that on the screen so yeah, people can that's see great. that. Yeah. Um, because you got to realize this guy has energy that never stops, and we're kind of yeah. both a little ADD, <laughs> exactly. and not by clinical. Right. Right. Anyway, Functionally, ADD. We reacted. Right. Um, it's the only way I can do it and stay, yeah. stay yeah. active well, and healthy. Not staying bored, for sure. Ah, and young. Um, this has been fun. I hope it's been fun for you because this is just another dynamic that goes on in this town in Hanover that just betters everybody that yeah. touches it. And that's so well, much of what Hanover's about thanks, in, the, Judy. in the valley. Thank, thank you. you and thanks because all you've who, enlightened, who watched in. It's great. Yeah, you've enlightened me and the rest of the people out there. So great. thank you. Uh, my pleasure to be um, here. And we'll give you a CD. You can even link it if you want to. Great. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you, guys. This is one of those fast half hours. Um, when you get a knowledge like this, a fountain of knowledge, I should say, um, it kind of takes over, and I, it makes my job easy. Great. But it's great to reconnect with Jay, who's always been a dynamite Good fun. guy. So thank you all for watching, and I will be letting people know when it's going to air. Um, I always do, and unfortunately, he's in a town that doesn't get this, so I guess that's his fault. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, and we'll be back soon with another show. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you again, too. Sure.